Hello and welcome, my name is Meeplus, they, she, he, and this is Literally Graphic. And today we are reviewing one of those not strictly indie titles that are not from the big two or about superheroes. Since there's no alliteration anyway, if anyone has a better term for my Saturday reviews besides everyone, not DC, Marvel, manga, or translated, I would appreciate it more. But as the title of this video indicates, we are looking at Borders, a middle grade adaption of a short story by Thomas King, now illustrated by Natasha Donovan. Both the short story and this adaption have been published by HarperCollins publisher, the former in 1997 and this adaption in 2021. Content notes for Border Guards and Being Stranded. Author Thomas King is a prolific writer and academic of Cherokee, Greek, and German descent who has lived and worked on both sides of the so-called border of which he is writing about here. Natasha Donovan is a Métis illustrator who works on both comics and picture books. Other works I have previously read of hers and would highly recommend are the Sakai Mother picture book and the Red Clouds short story in the This Place 150 Years Retold comic anthology. She has also illustrated the Surviving the City series that is on my TBR. Keywords that came to mind reading this book, colonization, growing up, moving, family, and media attention. The synopsis is, quote, on a trip to visit his older sister who has moved away from the family home on the reserve to Salt Lake City, a young boy and his mother are posed a simple question with a not so simple answer. Are you Canadian? The border guards ask. Or American? Then they answer, Blackfoot. And when border guards will not accept their citizenship, mother and son wind up trapped in an all too real limbo between nations that do not recognize who they are. End quote. A middle grade graphic novel, the dialogue and narrative is a bit on the deceptively simple side. I say deceptively because the rather blunt spotlight is being shown on the edge of an iceberg, as it were. As such, several other reviews I looked at wished for more context. I'm a bit torn. I'm generally a big fan of further reading lists in books. That said, I do think the book speaks for itself, and unless you already know the answers, it will fill you with questions. I will admit that I had almost forgotten that there was a time when people could generally cross this border without a passport, although obviously that even had its legislative limits. As this book demonstrates, the quiet grind of the resistance to our main protagonists, while not narratively dramatic, felt like it emphasized the bureaucratic absurdity of the apparent problem. I liked how both colonizer countries were equally skewered by King, as it's true, even if one likes to pretend it's better than the other, and King makes his point about the absurdity of this border without getting caught up in a debate. Art-wise, I really appreciate Natasha's style and the way she adapted this short story into a graphic novel, fleshing out the story in a way that builds it up rather than drag it out. Again, change. Small. Looking at the representation, being Blackfoot is obviously more a matter of citizenship than of so-called race. But there is some racial diversity in the cast as the social construct goes these days in so-called North America. Although I wish there had been some more clear black representation besides a random basketball player. Unsurprisingly, gender seems limited to the binary, but otherwise the balance of mother and older daughter being observed by our nameless younger son protagonist served the story very well, in my opinion. Definitely on the more progressive side when it comes to single mom representation in the 90s, it moves beyond gender stereotypes and the generally obedience-leaning narratives of books for younger people. Class was definitely a pretty well-developed aspect of the story, handled like all the other aspects of the book with a lot of subtlety. I really appreciate when seemingly average people, and all the limitations that implies, are shown to be strong, resourceful, and caring. Not perfect, but admirable. Ability, disability, and sexuality felt the least developed of all the facets of story I generally look at. The former is common, but never not disappointing. The latter, sexuality, felt like King did reach a certain level of neutrality on, with some characters having previously been in straight relationships, but it not being an active thing. To conclude, 
I'm really glad this book exists, especially in such an easy to read and attractive way that supports the important topic at hand. Three out of five stars. Bye y'all, keep reading and organize to end capitalist oppression. And as always, Literally Graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional land holders which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation.